Today's video takes us all the way back to Portland, Oregon in the year 1939. This is where two men, Edwin Mayer and Harold Graves, would create a new device that would be loved for years to come. All it would take is a photography business, greeting cards, some photos, and an idea. And suddenly, kids all over were collecting small paper discs that they would stare at for hours. However, these were not just any paper discs. Nope. We aren't talking about pogs. These guys would invent a whole new way to tell stories, visit faraway places, or simply look at photos. And I guess they also created the topic for today's video. Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to Macabre Graham Labs presents School of Boredom, showcase things likely forgotten. My name is Bats and I'll be your guide today as we discuss lesson 208, the vision of the original Viewmaster, Fun, seven frames at a time. Introduced in 1939 at the World's Fair, the Viewmaster was originally designed to be sold as a novelty or souvenir device and was intended as an improvement on the traditional postcards or location albums. Vacationers and less than favorite ants could grab a Viewmaster reel from their favorite vacation spot like the Grand Canyon, Niagara Falls, Carlsbad Caverns, Miami Beach or other national monuments and send them to their loved ones as something of a wish you were here kind of thing. But why not just get a postcard? Because these paper reels weren't just any photos, they were stereoscopic 3D images. But I think I'll let science bats explain. You may be asking, what exactly is stereoscopic 3D? Well, stereoscopy, also called stereoscopics or stereo imaging, is a technique for creating or enhancing the illusion of depth in an image by means of stereopsis for binocular vision. Any stereoscopic image is called a stereogram. Originally, stereogram referred to a pair of stereo images which could be viewed using a stereoscope. Stereoscopy is distinguished from other types of 3D displays that display an image in threefold dimensions, allowing the observer to increase information about the three-dimensional objects being displayed by head and eye movements. And what is a stereoscope? Well, a stereoscope is a device for viewing a stereoscopic pair of separate images depicting left and right eye views of the same scene as a single three-dimensional image. A typical stereoscope provides each eye with a lens that makes the image seen through it appear larger and more distant, and usually also shifts its apparent horizontal position, so for a person with normal binocular depth perception, the edges of the two images seemingly fuse into one stereo window. In current practice, the images are prepared so that the scene appears to be beyond this virtual window, through which objects are sometimes allowed to protrude, but this was not always the custom. A divider or other view-limiting feature is usually provided to prevent each eye from being distracted by also seeing the image intended for the other eye. Some of the first models of the Viewmaster were made from a material called Bakelite, and that was up until 1962 when it switched to a lighter plastic. For now though, we take you back to History Bats. Thank you for the information, Science Bats. Did you know that there was a ton of work and information that went into the development of the device known as the Viewmaster? And I will cover it at some point. If enough people let me know, that's what they want me to do in the comments section. For today's video though, we're going to discuss its origins in a TLDR format. It was created by Edwin Mayer, Harold Graves, and William Gruber in Portland, Oregon, United States. This was made possible as Mr. Gruber was a trained organ maker, trained by Welton Sons, which was a manufacturer of orchestrons, organs, and reproducing pianos, and the company was established in 1832. I think it's safe to say they knew exactly what they were doing. Even though both Gruber and Mayer both had created stereo imaging devices, it would be Gruber's that would become the prototype. To summarize, here's what the wiki says. He designed a machine that mounted the tiny pieces of Kodachrome color transparency film into reels made from heavy paper stock. A special viewer was also designed and produced. 
he had the idea of updating the old-fashioned stereoscope by using the new Kodachrome 16mm color film, which had recently become available. So now let's flash forward a couple of years into the 1940s, where Viewmaster would see itself as quite successful. However, it would almost see its end. Almost. Actually, we have the military to thank for that. You see, for those that don't know, in the 1940s there was a horrible war. In fact, it was World War II. Due to the efforts, paper and film were hard to come by, with the limited supply being held by the people working in the war. However, the military saw the usefulness of the device and got in touch with Sawyer Service Incorporated, the primary distributors of the Viewmaster in Portland, Oregon, and ordered 100,000 of the Viewmaster devices and around six million of the paper reels, saving the company from failing. And if you're anything like me, you're probably wondering why the United States military had such an interest in novelty souvenir slideshows. And they didn't. In fact, it would be used as a training and field device because the reels they ordered actually featured a variety of different things like tank, vehicle, and aircraft identifying reels that would show the user how to identify these said vehicles, ground layouts, range measurements, and from what I gathered, at times, secret messages, instructions, intel, and even orders. So now we flash forward again to the 1950s. So, in 1952, Sawyers, who was now responsible for the majority of the retail sales of the device, introduced their new line of the Viewmaster Personal line. This line would consist of the Model D, the Stereomatic 500, and the Viewmaster Personal Stereo Camera. The Stereomatic 500 was their first 3D projector. And the latter was pretty cool too, as the Viewmaster personal stereo camera would allow the user to create their very own Viewmaster reels. Unfortunately, this one would only last until the 1960s for about 10 years. And over the next several years, the Viewmaster would see a variety of styles, themes, and abilities. Some of the devices even came with the ability to play audio along with the reels, adding to the immersion. And yes, at some point I do intend to make a video about the modern Viewmasters, but they are so advanced they just didn't fit with this one. For now though, let's talk about the reels. Now normally I would say I could make a video about the reels that they made for the device. However, there were literally thousands upon thousands upon hundreds of thousands. So, I'm just going to mention the general topics and put a link below in the description to a website that has a consistently updated library of the Viewmaster reels. These reels have been being produced from the product's inception to as late as 2024, you know, when this video came out, and they came with a nearly unlimited set of themes, including, but not limited to, locations like South America, Europe, Asia, Africa, Antarctica, Australia, and North America. And locations weren't by far the only reels they had available, because they also had several other topics like United States National Parks, Music, Museums, World's Fairs, Theme Parks like Disneyland and Disney World, Animals, Nature, Aviation, Fairy Tales, automobiles and vehicles, comic books, movies, television, history, plant life, royalty, science, space exploration, United States monuments and locations, sports and sporting events, cartoons, cartoon characters, and so much more. I had a few different versions of the Viewmaster growing up, and I distinctly remember my early Donald Duck and Batman Viewmaster reels. They were a ton of fun, especially when you got them to focus and pop to life right before your eyes. Viewmaster has become a staple in a ton of kids' lives, and is fondly remembered by kids and adult kids alike. But you already know what I think. Now you know, I've just gotta ask. Did you ever grow up with Viewmaster? What were some of your favorite reels or memories? Do you have any comments or other favorite memories or stories? Did I forget to include something or leave something out? Maybe you have a suggestion for a future video or just want to drop in and say hi. Either way, I look forward to hearing from you.
And with that, unfortunately, we've come to the end of another School of Boredom video. I've been your host, Bats, and I hope you had a good time today as we took a look at Lesson 208. The Vision of the Viewmaster. Fun, seven frames at a time. Be sure to check back next time because you never know what we have in the store. And as usual, think for yourselves. Be excellent to each other. And of course, keep it creepy. We'll see you in the next one. Hey, thanks for checking out our video. If you enjoyed this one and would like to see more of our weird, creepy, odd, eccentric, or strange content as soon as it comes out, please feel free to click like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more. We'll see you later. Keep it creepy.